Welcome everyone to another episode of What to Stream with myself, Lupe from Cinemovie and Morgan from Cinemacy. We're both members of the Hollywood Critics Association. And uh, what do we got for this week? I think we have a promotion, right, this week? We do, yeah. So actually the Hollywood Critics Association is doing something pretty cool to celebrate Cinema Week. And um, Cinema Week is just a celebration of movies because we love them and what better uh, way to celebrate than watching and talking about a bunch of movies. So the Hollywood Critics Association is going to be hosting a daily t-shirt and hat giveaway. Um, and it's really easy to enter. All you have to do is answer today's question on Twitter and or Instagram, preferably both if you have both, but we'll accept either. Um, and tag HCA and Cinema Week in your tweet and or Instagram comment. Um, and the question of the week for everyone is, what was the first movie that you watched on streaming platforms that you wish you saw in a movie theater? So no wrong answers here, just <laughs> hopefully lots of good ones. Um, yeah, so that is our promotion. And I think we'll be linking it down below too, just to kind of run through the rules and requirements one more time. But um, but yeah, that's an exciting thing this week. Yeah, so check the description in, uh, down below and there'll be a link to Twitter and Instagram to the HCA um, platforms. So you can mm -hmm. enter there, read it and then enter it through there. Exactly. And a t-shirt and a hat, how cool. I, I want to enter. Summertime, you're gonna need a hat from the sun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool, well, I have um, a movie that comes out this Friday that I would love to talk about. It is called, Who Are You, Charlie Brown? And this is gonna be premiering on Apple TV Plus this Friday, and it is 54 minutes long, so it's pretty uh, bite-sized film, documentary, all about the man, Charles Schultz, who made the Charlie Brown comic strip. And this film is so sweet. It basically celebrates the iconic strip um, and Charles Schultz. And we kind of go into detail as to who Charles was. People called him Sparky, um, <laughs> which is very sweet. The reasoning why behind that, they, they go into detail there. But Charles Schultz was such an everyday man. Um, he was of the people, the, the comic strips that he wrote, you know, Charlie Brown being the most notable one, is very much a, a humanistic cartoon. Um, it's been described, Charlie Brown is described as a lovable loser. And it, Charles Schultz would go into detail saying that every character that he created was little pieces of, I think, every human. So with Linus, it's really the, the philosophical one. Like he has the blanket here in this picture and he's the one who gets really in depth with his emotions. Um, Charlie Brown is, yeah, the lovable loser. Like he tries, but he's kind of down on himself and isn't always super confident. Um, we have Lucy who's kind of the boss and she she's very overly confident. And at, every, at any given point throughout our life, I think we all kind of share the same characteristics and qualities that the Peanuts characters have. And so this documentary was so great, just kind of, yeah, learning about who Charles Schultz was, um, how his how he was raised and how what led him to create the iconic Peanuts characters. And it also interviews really notable actors and, and interesting figures that have their own special connection with the Peanuts characters. And actually interesting, um, tennis star Billie Jean King was really good friends with Charles Schultz, and he actually based the character Peppermint Patty off of Billie Jean King, which <laughs> I had no idea. And Peppermint Patty's the one with the short brown hair and the green, um, and she's she's kind of like one of the guys. And it totally just like once you kind of make that connection, and she kind of goes into detail about that inspiration, it just makes so much sense. Um, but she also gives an interview in this film just talking about how important the Peanuts characters were to her. Um, and aside from Billie Jean King, we have Drew Barrymore, um, Al Roker, Kevin Smith, Ira Glass from This American Life, all just sharing their 
personal relationship and story with the Peanuts characters. Um, and it, yeah, it comes on to Apple TV Plus this Friday. And I highly recommend you check it out. It's really sweet. And it's a, it'll make you happy. It'll make you feel good. So that is one of my recommendations for this week. Yeah, I'm interested to know more about him because we know all about the comics. I mean, all about the TV shows and the move, countless movies. And Yeah. But well, and yeah, what was interesting too is that he always wanted to draw and I think they called it ink, his cartoons mm -hmm. um, himself. Like a lot of cartoonists will do the rough sketches, but then have a team of people kind of outline and, and print, you know, the final version. But Charles Schultz was very determined to just do it all himself. Mm -hmm. And when, yeah, the, the last comic strip he put out before he died was very touching. And they, they talk about that. And that's good luck keeping a dry eye through that period of the <laughs> film. But Aww. yeah, just really fascinating. Cute. Yeah. Definitely check it out on Apple TV. Apple Plus. Yes. Exactly. Whatever they, whatever they call it these days. Yeah, all those words. Yeah. yeah. There's too many You'll pluses. <laughs> There's too many TVs in the wording. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cute. Agreed. Well, I have a documentary as well. Nice. Somebody who's current, uh, Mary J. Blige. She is celebrating oh. her 25th anniversary of her hit album, um, My Life. And hence, there's a documentary. By Mary J with uh, Mary J. Blige is a subject called My Life. It's an Amazon Prime documentary. It's out this Friday. And it's all about how her through her music, she was able to survive depression. Um, early on, she suffered a lot from depression. The documentary um, by um, Academy Award winner Vanessa Roth, they actually approached her about making this documentary celebrate the 25th anniversary of her LP. Um, and they pretty much document her uh, from as a child. Her dad died, they had to move to the projects. And that's where she really started to feel a lot of these emotional issues, depression because of her father died. She said the projects was such, such a dangerous place and she didn't know how, that, how they were gonna survive. Her mom being a single mom really struggled. And that really laid heavy, heavy on her, especially when into, she went into music. And what I didn't know was that Diddy was her mentor and producer early on. And he pretty much shaped her into what she is, you know, what she became. Uh, you know, she's a nine time Grammy winning recording artist. She does have an Academy Award nomination. Um, she's been doing a little more acting lately. And it's really, I mean, I'm not a Mary J. Blige fan as far as I, I really, I don't really know her music. Um, I've, I've heard some of it and I really like it, but I never really dealt or really listened to her lyrics. And her lyrics really um, talk about her battles with abuse, depression, and addiction. And apparently her fans feel very inspired by her lyrics. And uh, so this is a documentary, especially for fans, because you get to know her a little better. I don't think she's ever revealed herself in this way. And she reveals a lot. I mean, you would think a woman, you know, she comes off like so confident. You would never think that this, you know, this woman, um, when she was young, she was feeling all these kinds of emotions, which led her to drug abuse. Mm -hmm. And you have, you know, celebrities talking about how her music inspired them. There's Taraji, you got Tyler Perry, Alicia Keys. Um, so it's, it's a good documentary. And you'll also have, they also have show some clips from her live performance. She did a live performance celebrating her, um, her album and she performed all the tracks from that album live. And, uh, you know, I think it's not a good documentary. I think fans will really, really dig it. Me as a non-fan, if I felt like I didn't get enough because I don't know much about her, um, how she over, you know, overcame her drug addiction, but that's okay. I mean, it's all about how she was able to, um, move beyond those negative feelings through her lyrics. And now mm -hmm. she's inspired a ton. They, they include testimonials from fans who say that their lyrics inspired them to put aside those negative feelings and move ahead with life. Wow. So it's a, it sounds like a very powerful album. I might have to go and listen to it just to hear the lyrics, but yeah, through her lyrics, she was able to, you know, she said sometimes she gets those feelings once in a while, um, but she gets, she reminds herself um, through her writing. Mm -hmm. 
know, so she likes to express herself a lot through through music. And I guess it's you know, as an artist, that's what all artists do, right? Yeah, they use, that's they the use their medium. Yeah, they use their medium to kind of express uh, what they're feeling. And gladly, she she was able to overcome that. Um, so yeah, it's a wow. celebration of success, but also to realize that just because you have money doesn't mean your problems, all your problems have gone away, right? Mm -hmm. So they say, I so don't know. But. We, we don't know that either. We don't know that either. We don't know that life. Well, but like my mom always said, like, you don't take your money to your grave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my mom always said that. So, was, you know, I believe it. Plus, you know, it really gives you insight into how these people who you think have it all, they really don't. And, and it really explains how all these musicians, especially musicians and actors and artists, who take their own lives because they don't feel that satisfaction within them. And she talks about that, how you don't feel satisfied in her, in her case, she didn't feel satisfied as a woman, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, Oh, okay. That gives you kind of, for me, it gave me a new outlook on like, Oh, maybe that's what these people who seemingly have it all and then take their lives. Maybe they are feeling the same kind of way, you know, yeah. because those people on the outside, we don't understand it. We just see them as they got, they got it all. What's the problem? <laughs> yeah. Know? And that's why these, films are, and documentaries are so important to be made is because she is such like a strong, confident woman on the outside. We mm -hmm. would never know that, but being vocal about insecurities and struggles just makes it more okay, hopefully for other people yeah. to admit that. And then all, you know, all realize, okay, no one is confident all the time. Like even Mary J. Blige, who, yeah, nine Grammys, like that's insane. So that sounds really interesting. Okay, it's going on my watch list. Yeah, so Amazon Prime, is, that's where you can watch it starting um, this weekend. Cool, awesome. I, well, think we have I, have, a, I think we have a theme going on here. <laughs> we do, because I have another documentary to talk about, <laughs> um, about a strong, confident figure as well, um, but a little bit different from Mary J. Blige. This is about the chef Wolfgang Puck, <laughs> who is a very, comedic gentleman. Um, this this film is really great. I actually saw it as part of the Tribeca Film Festival last week. It was in their lineup for yeah the documentary section. And this film was directed by David Gelb, who if you're familiar with the, the other documentary, Jiro Dreams of Sushi, or if you've seen Chef's Table on Netflix, this is the same creative genius, creative foodie genius behind this film, Wolfgang. And it will be coming to Disney Plus this Friday. So that's very exciting. I didn't really know much about the history of Wolfgang Puck. I obviously you know, knew he was a chef and he had restaurants, but that was kind of it. Um, so I wasn't super, I was maybe 85% interested in watching this documentary at first. It wasn't a solid 100 because I just didn't think it would be that interesting to me, but oh my gosh, this was the most fun watch because Wolfgang Puck is such a character. Ever since he was a child, he's been just this very kind of outspoken, witty, sharp, intelligent man who knew he wanted to be a chef and a restaurateur from a really young age and started working in kitchens when he was eight years old, um, also to move away from his abusive stepfather. He, he would do whatever he could to be out of the house. His mother was not standing up for him and, and his stepfather was very, very abusive. And so he had a pretty rough and traumatic childhood, but that forced him, that was kind of the catalyst to get him to move um, and, and start a life where he was doing what he actually wanted to do and that was cook. And the film goes into detail about Wolfgang's, you know, early life and then how he came to Los Angeles and Hollywood, eventually opening Spago, which is the restaurant that he's probably best known for, I would say. Um, and oh my gosh, the close-ups on the food, <laughs> the salmon pizza, it just like, I would recommend watching this movie either while you eat dinner or having just had dinner, so you're not gonna want to eat more, it, it, it will make you very hungry because David Gelb has such a good way of capturing 
food in just this cinematic way that doesn't seem real. It's really, really funny and amazing how he's able to just make the food come alive. Um, Wolfgang, yeah, is it's a great watch. It's very, very family friendly too. It makes sense why it's going to Disney Plus. There's not, it doesn't go into maybe as much detail as Jiro Dreams of Sushi did. There's a lot of kind of optimistic one-liners that that Wolfgang says, and maybe that's just his personality. He's kind of a quotable man, um, but it did feel very, yeah, like family-friendly movie. And especially if you live in and around the Los Angeles area, it will make you want to make a reservation at Spago for sure. So I highly recommend checking out Wolfgang. It's really fun and um, yeah, you will be hungry. So you've been warned. Oh, I think you're muted. Oops. Yeah, I mean, that's the worst when you're watching a movie. Well, even a movie when they have, they have like delicious foods, like the whole theme of the movies, like, you know, relationships around food. You're like, oh yes. man, I should have ate before I came. Oh yeah, cause yeah, yeah, you have to. The Just every dish just looks incredible. And I mean, maybe it'll spark some interest in like cooking yourself and, and finding out new recipes and weird things to put together and make a meal, so. Um, yeah, don't watch this on an empty stomach. I guess that's my my big takeaway <laughs> for this one. Yeah, I did the whole uh, looking up recipes and, and cooking more during the pandemic, but then I got bored and I was like, okay, I'm tired. Yeah, it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to my usual. But instead of creating all these, you know, gourmet kind of things, I got tired yeah. really quick of it. After like yeah. six months, I was like, yeah, okay, I'm making the same things over and over again. It was kind of boring, but uh, yeah, Wolfgang. Yeah. Yeah, he's funny. It's funny that you say he's a very funny guy because when you see him in interviews, he's always very humorous. So it makes sense that he's that kind of a guy. Oh, totally. Yeah, totally. And he just kind of gets more confident with age too. So mm. it's it's great. He's a joy. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, he yeah. always seemed confident even from years ago when I first heard of him when his accent was thicker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. It, he's kind of maybe assimilated a little bit over time yeah. being here, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good point. Well, I'm going to break the cycle. My next uh, choice is not a documentary. It is a TV series that's coming to an end on Amazon Prime. It's Bosch. Have you watched Bosch? Oh, Bosch? no. I know it, but I haven't watched it. Yeah, so it's the last season. It's premiering this uh, weekend. The last eight episodes, uh, all, all eight episodes will premiere this Friday. Uh, beware, set a time, because you're going to binge it. I am on episode five going into six. It is really, really good. Like always, if you're a fan of Bosch, you're not gonna be disappointed. It's uh, same interest, the cases are interesting. And in this case, it is based on a real arson case. And Bosch um, has to deal, has to find the culprits who set a blaze an apartment building that killed um, two women and the daughter who was 10 years old. And they, they call her the Tamale girl. She was 10 years old, the doors were locked to the roof. So she was trying to escape, but couldn't. And she died from a smoke inhalation. And so if you know Bosch, played by Titus Welliver, he is on a mission to find out who killed this little girl. It's personal for him. And so he goes after this Latino gang who are suspected of being the suspects. But as usual, you have the supporting cast. Here you have the chief, played by, played by Lance Reddick, Chief Irving. He's having some uh, trouble as well with the new mayor. Uh, the first Latina was um, won the seat mayor, as a mayoral candidate. And she's not a fan of Chief Irving. So he's worried about his job and he's doing some uh, pretty sneaky things. Um, to keep his job. And of course, there's Mimi Rogers who plays Honey Chandler. She is great in this role, I really love her. She comes into, um, let's just say, some difficulties. I won't um, spoil it for anyone, but uh, she's got a really, really good storyline this season, she always does. She plays this hotshot lawyer who gets the famous, uh, the rich uh, suspects off the hook. And she gets money from the city for victims of like police violence. And of course, Titus 
or I should say Bosch has been her target for a while, but she's come around to Bosch the last few seasons. And then we also have uh, Jamie Hector who plays um, Jerry. He's going through some emotional problems right now, uh, given the events from last season when he killed um, a drug dealer for the head of a drug, uh, drug ring. But he's feeling guilty about it because we don't know the exact story of what happened, whether the person had a gun or not, and if he's pointed at him. So he's feeling some guilt about that. And like I mentioned, it's eight episodes. Um, it's just as enthralling as the other six episodes. I just started watching this show uh, two, two seasons ago or last season, the no, last season, which was like two years ago. And it's just really, really good. It really digs deep into the LAPD. He's an LAPD sergeant um, or, or detective. And they really take on a lot of the um, things going on right now, like corruption. They talk about a few bad apples. Um, and this season, one of the lieutenants, a woman, Lieutenant Billets, who's a woman and she's a lesbian, has really has to, ha really has to battle with harassment. There's like pictures of her going around. They superimpose her face on a, on a naked body. They put, um, they wrote dyke on her car. So it's really, really telling. And this is why it's so good. A lot of people have said that this is just as good as The Wire. Oh, um, the high bar. It, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I haven't watched The Wire, but I heard. Um, you know, I heard, it's, I think the wire is probably a little more, uh, raw mm -hmm. than, than Bosch, but Bosch, I've always said, reminds me, I always, I thought it was a Michael Mann production because it's so slick, mm -hmm. you know, the way they shoot Los Angeles is just beautiful. Um, the action is really good, but I think just the characters are really, really, really good. And I'm just surprised nobody, they're not really being acknowledged. I think the first season, I think they have had a few Emmy nominee nominations. But otherwise, they've gone under the radar. And I, I resisted watching it because I thought, oh, I don't want to watch another cop show, especially yeah. if we're talking about a corrupt cop because I'm kind of done with it. But Bosch is, um, used to be kind of a corrupt cop. Uh -huh. But now he changed his way. So he's trying to you know, run the straight, you know, straight line. And he cheats here and there, but he's really trying to stay on course. And so that's how all the other issues come up about the LAPD and some of the... Um, abuses um, that we hear about LAPD that is in the show as well. And so that's what I like about the show. They really deal with it um, in a really realistic way. And I've never seen other cop shows, even like Law and Order, as much as I love Law and Order, mm -hmm. it's very procedural. This one is not a procedural, that kind of type of show. It's, it's very different. Right. Interesting. I like the connection between The Wire and this, because I think when The Wire ended, but at least for me, I watched it kind of later, but so many people were looking for something to fill that mm -hmm. gap because I, I haven't seen anything that's come close to the wire. So that's very interesting. Yeah, a few people on YouTube. Oh, and they have the best um, opening theme song. I love this song. <laughs> this is the only show I don't skip the intro. Oh, wow. It's by, uh, it's called Human Nature is a Song. It's by a band called Caught a Ghosts. And it's off their debut album. And it's just like a jazzy, elect electronic. Oh, it's such a beautiful song. I just love it. I can hear it over and over again. So like I said, the only show I don't skip the intro. Wow. Okay, I definitely I love, have to check this out. I love the visuals. The visuals with the music is just perfection. I uh -huh. mean, just, uh, that's actually where I saw the comments. Because um, I wanted to, I wanted to um, research who, whose song this was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found a video and all the comments were like, my God, this show. <laughs> and that wow. intro, like that intro was just like the best of any show ever. Yeah. Yeah. So alone, nice. just for that, check it out. But yeah, it's seven seasons. And I promise you, you're going to get hooked. Even if you start like a season five or six. Mm -hmm. Because cool. it's just really, they're, you know, they're, um, all the seasons are sort of independent. Like, you, you know, one character will have a storyline that crosses over the seasons. Like, um, I mentioned the character of Jerry, but mm. otherwise you can pick it up um, pretty much anytime. Nice. It's not a linear story, you know, where you see like a progression of something. It's kind of yeah. like the same, you know, same character dealing with different storylines and they just handle characterizations here. It's just, um, it's one of the best shows I've seen as far as like all the characters stand out, not yeah. just one. Awesome. Well, 
I have not a documentary for my last film, but it does take place in Los Angeles. So that's kind of the theme there with this one. Um, so this is a movie called Gully. And you may have heard of this. Oh boy, okay. So I, um, full disclosure, I know the director of this movie. I worked with him before. I was actually his um, assistant for a while. And um, I was very excited when this movie came out at Tribeca in 2019. It premiered there. I was doing the red carpet for Cinemacy and um, interviewed a bunch of the guys and, and Nabil, who's the director. Um, and Nabil, I'll just start by saying, he's a very well-known and incredibly talented music video director. He's worked for, let's done projects for Kanye West, um, for Frank Ocean, for Bon Iver, Dua Lipa. Like he's still making great music videos. And um, this is his first feature length film debut. And so there was a lot of expectation and pressure I think put on him to make this movie and make it live up to his music videos. Um, and basically Gully tells the story of three teenagers who are played by Kelvin Harrison Jr., Jacob Lattimore and Charlie Plummer who are on screen here. And they all live in South Central LA and they're all victims of extreme childhoods and they have traumatic upbringings and that's kind of what they bond over is just being in not not being able to find a way out of their situation and circumstance and uh out of boredom and abandonment one day the the three of them decide to kind of cause some havoc and destroy their impoverished community just because um, they have, they're all in true, into video games too. So they uh, kind of have that violent nature just in their everyday lives through playing video games. And directorially, what's really cool is that Nabil takes this video game style, which is kind of an alternate reality type of style and incorporates it into real life in this film. So in one instance, um, who is it? It's Jacob Lattimore has his skateboard and he'll be pretending to shoot a gun like at a police helicopter in the sky. And the the film will then kind of switch into this video game visual where the skateboard turns into this crazy machine gun type thing and everything turns neon green and it's very animated and visually it's very bold and, and daring and um, it's not a straightforward film in that sense. Um, so a lot of troubling things happen throughout the movie. The boys, it's kind of frustrating to see them cause so much trouble and destruction, um, but we understand why they do it. It's because they have been abandoned. They feel like no one is paying attention to them. Um, they hate being stuck in like the societal norms that they feel like they've been placed into. Um, and so they just take it out on some innocent people, some guilty people. And uh, yeah, it gets tough. Towards the end, it gets a little bit tough. But um, the one thing about Gully is I think it's been unfairly, <laughs> unfairly criticized because one of the stars of the film is Amber Heard and she plays Charlie Plummer's mom, which, yeah, I think they're supposed to be 13 years apart in age. So she was definitely a, a teen mom when she had him in the film. But, oh boy. So the, <laughs> the red carpet video that I did at Tribeca has been getting tons of negative uh, thumbs down and comments because people personally don't like Amber Heard. And people are boycotting this movie and rating this movie terribly without even having seen it just because Amber Heard is in it. And I think that's ridiculous. I, I think, not even just Nabil, but like the entire cast and filmmakers shouldn't be penalized essentially for something that maybe one of their actors did, maybe not. That's not even our business. Um, so that's that's been really hard to see. And I know this is like kind of a bit of a more personal take, but knowing that Nabil worked so hard on this and seeing it 
trashed online. And I think Rotten Tomatoes has it at a 33% or something. And it's just, wow. it's really bad. Like it's, it's really bad. And I mean, is the movie great and amazing? No, I mean, he definitely, there are things that, you know, you could critique about it. Maybe he's like story isn't fully developed and it doesn't necessarily go where you want it to just, I don't know. Yeah. Story-wise narratively, but to fully tarnish it and bring it down because someone was cast in a role and you don't like that person is just kind of insane to me. So it's been an interesting journey for Nabil. I know that. Um, but Gully, yeah, after sitting on the shelf for a couple of years, it's finally, it was out in theaters a couple of weeks ago and it's now available on VOD. Um, yeah, I would be interested to know what people actually thought about it. If you have no strong opinion about Amber Heard and you can kind of just put that aside and just focus on the movie and, and the amount of talent that's in here, like Jacob Lattimore, Charlie Plummer, Kelvin Harrison Jr., who is incredible. Like it, it's a really solid film that's risk-taking and boundary pushing for sure. So kind of unfortunate casting, I guess, but that, I don't know. So it goes, I suppose. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. Hopefully that'll uh, spark some interest. Just, you know how it is. Yeah. The way they say no, pub no public bad publicity is not good publicity or something like that. Yeah, like any publicity is good. Yeah. Which makes sense. This might be uh, an exception <laughs> to that <laughs> saying, because it's just, if you type in Gully Amber Heard anywhere, it, it's just kind of, it's actually impressive how many people don't like her or just believe this whole Johnny Depp, Amber Heard stuff, which that's not even important or relevant to the movie at all. But I guess it is right now because that's the only reason why people are kind of hating on it. Well, I mean, it's, it's sad because Kelvin and Charlie, they have such really great performances right before the pandemic, their movies. Yeah, um, or really, really good. So they're really, really good actors. So hopefully, right. hopefully, the majority of people who watch these indies anyway, um, they probably don't pay attention to that kind of stuff because it seems like, well, the Johnny Depp fan club. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> they don't gosh, strike yeah. me as as indie watchers. I mean, they, yeah, they probably true. are some in there, but I don't know. I just I think there's just some some machine back in the you know, Twitter that's generating these trolls. You know, I don't uh -huh. I don't think that many people really care. I mean, people love Johnny Depp, but. Not yeah. to the level where they make it their life's mission to ruin any movie that you know a person they don't like is in. It just makes no. I mean, she's an Aquaman too. So what they, I mean, there's just you know like yeah, it's not gonna make a difference. People should yeah. just kind of get over it and let them deal with their whatever they was done. If that's like a personal matter. Exactly. If you, you know, have nothing nice to say. Say nothing at all. <laughs> that's what my mama always right? said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that should be the tw the motto the motto on Twitter. Oh my gosh, I know. It would be a much nicer place if that was Twitter's like motto. Yeah, I used to love Twitter just for movie news and now it's been overtaken. Yeah, I, like, I rarely use it anymore, to be really? honest. I'm more of like Instagram, but I mean, Twitter is important. So of course I still, I'm still on it, but I, I rarely, yeah, will put my opinion out there. Yeah, I use Twitter only because I have to. Like, I share the, my articles from Cinema Movie TV and my interviews. But otherwise, if I didn't have to, I wouldn't be on it just because it's a, a rabbit hole. You know, you're like, oh, why is this trending? And then all of a sudden, it's like half an hour later, and you're like, damn it. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> well, if people want to talk uh, negative, let's talk about the movie Gone Girl. I'm sure you've watched Gone Girl. Oh, yes. Well, it's on Hulu, and apparently it's on FX now as well. So this is my oldie but goodie. Um, this movie is just phenomenal. Um, I think uh, Rosamund Pike was robbed of an Oscar nomination or nom yeah win because she was nominated for Best Actress because she was really good in this movie. I don't know if yeah. you agree or disagree. But oh yeah, yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. So Gone Girl is based on the book, um, starring Ben Affleck, like I mentioned, Rosamund Pike, Neil Patrick Harris, Tyler Perry. Carrie Coon, Kim Dick Dickens, and Patrick Fuji, I think is how you pronounce his name, um, from Almost Famous. And Ben Affleck's character, Nick Dunn, his wife disappears, played by Rosamund Pike, Amy. And of course, the police always say the husband is the first to suspect. So I don't want to reveal the twist. 
if you haven't read the book, but it's really, really good. It doesn't come until like halfway in the film and it really turns the genre on its head because you think it's going to be one film. I came in, I came in not knowing anything about the book. So for me, it was quite a shock. Um, so go into it without having read any reviews or anything, because I think that's the best part of this movie is when you find out what the twist is. Um, and like I said, uh, Rosamund Pike is deliciously bad. Um, and Ben Affleck too, I think it was a real um, risk for him to take this role because he's not likable at all in this movie. Because you find out he's got a mistress, he's not on the up and up, but still you can't, um, by the end, you're still, you, you'd like him, but I don't know. It's, it's such a weird movie in the sense that the characters are not who you think they are. And that's what the beauty is of this film. Like I said, the main attraction is Rosamund Pike, her performance. And then I think is a once in a lifetime kind of performance. You'll never forget. So yeah, check out the movie. It's on Hulu and FX now. Whenever it's on cable, I'll watch it again. Mm -hmm. Because it's just really good, especially as you go along and there's new discoveries. Like you don't know he has a mistress um, until a little later in the film. So just little things that are revealed throughout. And it's, of course, can I mention David Fincher? If you're a fan of David Fincher, I'm yes. sure you already watched this movie. But, uh, <laughs> but it's a good, and, yeah, it's good to rewatch and revisit for sure. It's mm -hmm. one that doesn't get old. No, not at all. I just watched it the other day and my husband's looking at me like, why are you watching that movie again? Are you getting ideas? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, I would never be that elaborate. <laughs> yeah, it's too much work. <laughs> and planning like she, like she did. But uh -huh. uh, yeah, <laughs> I have a hard time seeing uh thinking most people haven't seen it, but I'm sure a lot of people have not seen this film. Yeah. So that's my oldie but goodie choice. Cool. Gone girl. Good recommendations. Yeah. So I think we got a bunch of good stuff for this weekend. Yes, we do. And just a quick reminder to everyone that it is cinema week. And so if you go on Twitter and Instagram and you are to answer the question, what was a movie you watched on streaming but wished you saw in a movie theater? You have the chance to win an HCA t-shirt and hat. So find the link Fun. below to Twitter and Instagram to the HCA page and uh, you can enter through there. Yeah, sounds good. And give us a like and subscribe to this channel. Um, we got plenty of programming all week, which is really cool. So mm -hmm. if you've got the time, 11 o'clock every day, there's a new uh, episode of programs every Monday through Friday. So I'll make sure to watch those. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah. And follow us on Twitter. There's our handles on screen. Yes. And Instagram. That's the Instagram. <laughs> Add a TV online for Instagram. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, uh, until next time. Stay tuned and uh, tell us what you're watching in the comments below. See ya. All right. See you next week. Bye. I have to go to my um, video, which I have no idea where it is. In the meantime. In the meantime, <laughs> have a good weekend, everybody.